Hey guys, welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Steve Sanders, joined again with Brittany Barella, here to talk to you today about transmission adapters and motor mounts. So, the importance of picking a good motor mount, especially for a four-cylinder engine, is that they're not a naturally balanced engine like a V engine would be. So, if you have uh, the wrong solution for your motor mounts, you're going to get a lot of vibration. At Cummins, we talk about NVH quite a bit, noise, vibration, and harshness. If you have a shaky engine, it's not just unpleasant in the steering wheel, it resonates sound through every panel of your vehicle. So getting that right and choosing a proven solution is key. I myself learned this the hard way uh, when I did my first 4B swap. Uh, I you know, picked a motor mount that I thought would be a good motor mount, and then I kind of laid the engine in the frame, and I thought, okay, how do I put this motor mount between the engine and the frame? Fabbed up some stuff that I thought would work, built the rest of the Jeep around it, got it all done, and um, went to drive it, and it was horrible. And it shook the hood, and it shook everything, and I thought, this just can't be right. Uh, so I did some homework uh, after the fact, um, mistakenly. Uh, figured out that there was a better solution out there. Uh, tried to mimic that solution as best as possible, and a week later, I uh, tore my Jeep up. Put that uh, better motor mount set up in, and I was much, much, much happier. The R28 has a lot of uh, SEMA members out there who are offering motor mounts off the shelf that are proven solutions. Uh, they're simple focal mounts. They utilize all four uh, block pads that we have here. So one thing you want to make sure you're doing if you're building it yourself is that you're not just grabbing two or three of these holes. You want to use all four of these holes. Uh, they're for an M12 bolt. Uh, we have all the torque specs and everything like that in the installation guide, but again, Probably the best thing to do and the easiest thing to do is look for one of those proven solutions from a SEMA aftermarket supplier uh, online. So once you've selected your engine mounts, the next critical component you'll need to source is your transmission adapter. So the R2.8 uh, flywheel and flywheel housing mount directly to a Getrag 5-speed manual. It's a transmission used in our automotive products in Australia and other global markets. We do provide the bolt pattern and all the dimensions of the back of the engine in the installation guide, but most likely you're probably not using a Getrack 5-speed in your repower. So you're going to need some sort of adapter for your flywheel housing con to connect to the bell housing on your transmission and for your flywheel to connect to your clutch. You're going to have removed this bracket for your oil filter that will be out of the way mounted on the chassis and you'll want to take into consideration your starter, which again is mounted on your flywheel housing and interacts directly with your flywheel. So definitely look for a SEMA member who has engineered transmission adapters and flywheel adaptation um, that will take all of this into account and will reduce overhung mass on your flywheel and crankshaft to reduce any potential for failure. Yeah, and, and one thing we want to do is really encourage you to go to CumminsRepower.com, check out these uh, repower profiles that we're going to be continually posting from end users who have had success installing their R2.8. They're going to have hyperlinks to parts that they used, anything they want to showcase that they think is a good solution from the aftermarket for this engine. Uh, that way it takes some of the guesswork out of it for you because we know that it's expensive to have to guess. That's it for this segment of Cummins Repower Garage. Stay tuned for more episodes where we do deeper dives into the installation guide. See you next time. Thanks. So,